Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. I am one of three Bouchards that will be on this episode. Uh Uh-oh, that's a tease. You already set the thumbnail. Coulter Bouchard. (laughs) And I'm Dominique Bouchard. And we are a real couple having real ass conversations, inviting you in as our third. On today's episode, Navigating Dynamics with In-Laws, featuring my father, Pierre Bouchard, having difficult conversations about boundaries, and this is usually where I'd make a joke, but Don may kill me if I make light of this episode. Don't kill me. I like being alive. I shan't. If cancer couldn't, you probably couldn't either. First, let's check in. It's not. How you doing? (laughs) What's up? I am doing well by the time this episode comes out. It's going to be November. Hey. It's going to be the best time of the year. Yeah. It's officially the holidays. Uh Uh-huh. So how can I, how can I be anything but excellent? Yeah. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in November also. This might be a terrible time for me, actually. This might be a terrible time. But Dom of the past, as I'm recording this, is really excited about the holidays. I don't know if this is going to be out before or after the election, but... Probably the day of, actually. Ooh! No, we come in on Mondays. The election, I believe, is on a Tuesday. The 5th? The 4th or the 5th? You know, American friends, uh, and that's like 90% of our audience, Yeah, yeah. do the right thing. And uh, I'm not a professional broadcaster. I'm not going to get into trouble for this. No. Vote for Kamala Harris. Like, good Lord. What? Not making any claims that there is any level of perfection um there but i think when you have you know imminent disaster versus not so imminent take take the softer route that's that's my here's a dream that's scenario my advice. for me trump loses right absolutely then he's like due in court like a couple of weeks later for sentencing mm. god yeah based on the evidence of course rule of law and all that stuff Imagine that guy going to j- losing and then going to jail. <gasps> you never go to jail, Ooh. though. And again, like this is months away as of when we're recording this. So <laughs> who knows what could happen again? I, I have I'm, I'm in a very optimistic mood in terms of what's coming up in November. Yeah. So holidays, the most magical time. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. I um I've been watching a lot of videos on woodworking lately and I want to I want to build you something. <laughs> I feel like that's how I could be like the ultimate man is by building you something with my hands, like a house or a deck or whittling something for you. Well, so here's the thing. Yeah. You've taken, you've removed a lot of doors in our home. Uh, Yet to replace them. Maybe Dom of November has doors in her home. Probably not. Uh, You've stripped our deck. Mm -hmm. Like upon moving in here. It looks a lot better than it did. Never painted that. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of wood. There's a lot of exposed wood. A lot of exposed things in our home. There was a. There was a. Le- <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. There was like what we thought was a leak in the in the ceiling, and then you just went and you popped a hole in it. And that's With a finger. Still there. With a finger. <laughs> Who was thinking otherwise? What do you want me to use? A chopstick. Either way, there's a lot you can do if you want to. Like. I need a fresh project. I don't want to have to feel very fix. fresh. No, I, I need like I need to sandbox this. I need to like st- I need to go to here's a, here's a, we need to buy a plot of land. What? Yeah. Doesn't your family have land in Grenada? Don't get me started. Listen, if you have parents with land somewhere, you know that that is the 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 biggest issue in your family, and that all the siblings do nothing but fight over the stupid ass land. That when you see it, you're like, this is what y'all stop talking to your brother for two decades over. To be fair, in your family, that I wouldn't say that's like the biggest issue. I would say that's one of ten what big issues. What would you issues. say? What would you say? This is the episode. Yeah, let's talk about in-laws. Go ahead. No. Smart. You. you know what? Can we shout out Coulter for making a good decision? Air horns back. <laughs> <laughs> I got a comment from somebody saying, "I've been listening to your earlier episodes. Can you edit out the air horn?" No. Can it's you? There. I'm yeah. not, who's doing that? We're nah, not doing nah, that, y'all. Just, not just progress with us. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Just we'll bring it back it. one day. No, we won't. Final episode. The final episode. The divorce episode. <gasps> Get ready, y'all. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this ring is coming off. <laughs> Take that ring off. You could buy our rings in the like in, in the merch section. Oh my website. god! <laughs> <laughs> just it just attached to like a bidding site. <laughs> Oh, it's dark. Hey, everybody. It's my dad. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks to be here. We're going to start off with what was it like raising Coulter? 
my God. Okay, it, like, you could, he no, couldn't just say, I, like, it was great. Well, like, they, he's preparing it, himself. But I, I mean, the overall experience was great. But I think, hey, you guys have four and a half years under your belt. You know so what? you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's raising a child is not easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it just isn't. It's a constant repetition. It's constant... Um, well, repetition, but constantly trying to correct bad behavior, introduce good behavior. Um, so that part was just long. Like it just, it, it, honestly, <laughs> in fact, long. some would say it's still going on today <laughs> well, at 33 years and old. There, there's an interesting part, right? When you, when you decide to have kids, you think, oh, okay, 18, I can suck it up for 18 mm. years. And after that, right? Home free, they're gone. They're doing their own lives. And funny enough, it's harder as a parent, mm. when your kids are, are older, they're no longer under your control, right? It's oh, it's God. not something that, oh, yes, dad, okay, I'll do that right away, dad, or, or don't yell at me he's, for doing he's, this. He's and, lying. I'm just like, you're great. You're perfect. I do whatever you want me to. Well, you did when you were a child, right? <laughs> and that's where, really, and when you look at the difficulty in raising kids, the, the, the first, I don't know, five, six years or- Don't say that's the easy part. Okay, I won't say oh, it. I'll oh, think no. it. You read my mind. But there's, it, it's just fraught with un, unforeseen landmines or unforeseen obstacles. And I don't, I mean, you're giving me that look like, oh my <laughs> God, is it, too late to, is it too late to set her back? Uh, and the answer is yes, it is far yes. too late to set her back. But the good thing for you guys is you have a, a pretty good support system with us as far as, I mean, you're going away uh, next next week. Next week. Whoa, yeah. So, I mean, uh, we obviously have uh, Nia for the week, and, mm -hmm. and it's great. But back to what was it like raising Coulter. Um, all in all, it was good. You know what? Uh, I think when I look at both our children, Coulter gave us a less least amount of grief. Mm. And we've got that uh, on tape. Wrap it up, everybody. We got what we needed. We're done for the day. Right, thanks for coming up, Dad. <laughs> but you were. I mean, you were, you were, uh, uh, you listened to directos from us well. You didn't give us a whole lot of attitude at, at the age of five, six. Uh, um, so no, that was fine. Uh, but then you get into the formative years, right? You get mm. to six, seven, eight. Now you're developing a mind of your own. Now you start to question things more and more. And why are we doing this? I don't want to do that. And our response is maybe not directly, but it was always, you're just going to do what you're told. All right. Cause we got to get this done. We have a tight schedule and we have to be here. here so just go. So that was harder, but still, um, you, you still get the respect and they listen to you. So that was good. I and find myself, teenage years. I find myself saying that to Nia sometimes like, she goes, why do I have to do this? And it's like, because I've asked you 19 times right. and we yeah. need to go. Yeah. And like, you just need to wipe your own ass. Yeah. No, well, no. and again, back to the repetitiveness of it. Eh? Yeah. So yeah. again, um, uh, how was raising Coulter? Uh, well, probably no different than raising Nia or, or us raising uh, our, our daughter. Just a lot, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, though, the, the, the rewards are um, immense. Right. You you put all this time, all this effort into in, into what you think is a good job, but you don't really know. Right. Until the final result uh, is there. And by final result, I don't know if you ever really get to that. I was going to ask, result, what right? is the final yeah. result? Well, for me, it was, uh, let's say, 18. Right. That was kind of the where we had. <laughs> yikes. Where we had control or <laughs> where we kind of stopped having control over you. Right. Um, and as the years go on, the control becomes less, 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 and less. So by the time you're 18 or even less than that, 16, 17, you still respect us as parents, but really you're not listening really to what we say or. Oh no, you, I was frightened. I was frightened. The, uh, the, oh. the threat of like the implicit threat of just like being in trouble, like this amorphous trouble I, I, to, to be in trouble to be to have like disapproval from anybody oh my god yeah and that's that, that's i think that's what made you such a, a an Cuck. easy child you know, <laughs> an such easy child uh, an easy child to to raise um and then next thing you know you're 18 and the good thing about when you look because you left pretty much right at 18 you went to university you stay with us a couple months and then the commute was just too much so yeah let's get into residence and then that was it you never move back home. You never, uh, like that was the kind of the severing the, the ties, not severing well, the ties. Well, because I met this temptress, the, uh, right? The, yeah, temptress. <laughs> you're, you're cutting the apron strings off, right? Mm. You're gone. You're, you're on your own. And I was never so proud uh, of you when your first gig you got, 
And I remember you talking to me about it the the day you accepted the offer. Now, Do you, you mean this is after I've graduated university? Yeah, this so is this starting is my career. Starting your career, right? And your first gig was uh, Northern BC. And I remember the conversation you're having with me and you're explaining the, you know, what the job is and what the, what it pays and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm saying, okay, um, so like, you need, like, uh, do you want me to list you some pros and cons or good and bad, like to make your decision? Culture no, 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 dad, I, I already accepted the job and I'm leaving, blah, blah, blah. So, oh, oh. Shouldn't have. So this is like a courtesy call then, right? Yeah. Should have just asked for cons and I should have uh, let you convince me. Well, what a nightmare. Would you have ever listened to me? No. No, of course not. No. Would you have listened to you? No. Of course no. not. No. I mean, uh, uh, I can say the same about when I uh, first started my uh, career, if you will. And had I listened to more people, I would not have chosen this to do as a career. But I did, right? And and, and it's done. Um, so did you notice parallels at that point? Like, when when did the parallels start for you? Well, I was, I was going to finish. So here you are. Now you're 18 years old. And... Uh, off you, no, you're, I guess you would have been uh, 21, right? By the time you left. 23. 22, 23, yeah. <clears throat> wow. Jeez. Lose track of time. 23. <laughs> so at 23, you and I are roughly the same age as when I started uh, my business. Mm -hmm. um, but here you are, all of a sudden, on your own, going to northern BC at Christmas time. Not only at Christmas time. I think it was two days Two days before, before Christmas. Yeah. I think you landed uh, landed there Christmas Eve. What a nightmare. Well, For context, and, and this is across the country. So he moved across the country well, yeah. to a remote city or without remote his, town. Without his girl, right? Without anybody. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm thinking, wow, this is a this is huge. This is a big step. And you're going there with no no support system, no infrastructure, no friends, no place to live even, right? So at least the, the, the people at the station were kind enough to invite you, I think, for... Uh, Nobody had me over didn't. on Christmas. They oh, they didn't. Didn't. I spent <laughs> Christmas alone. Oh, no, they did yeah. not. You was in a hotel room? Yeah, I was in a, I was in a hotel I did, room. Yeah, I do remember that. Nothing now. was open. You couldn't eat anywhere. I had, had a banana? I had bananas and I had a couple of beer that well, I had in the fridge. So here you are, 23, alone, uh, in a completely strange place. I would say fairly remote, right? I mean, uh, it was it was twelve thousand people. You had to uh, plug in your car because it was so cold. <laughs> in Wait, July, I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd say it was remote. In July, um, so that was a that was big for me. I thought, wow, and you did it. Wow, you did it with how much does my son uh, hate us that he wants to move that far away in the middle of know, winter? But I understood. I mean, you, 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 this is a this is your big break, right? This is how mm -hmm. you view this is this is me breaking into into the business, and you did. You've done a lot of things that were kind of um, impressive. Wrote a book mm. at the age of 14, 15, right? It didn't get published, but they looked at it, right? You got it, uh, you got it as far as a book cover and sure. I think something else. But that's impressive, right? You 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 got your got yourself a typewriter, right? An yeah. old school typewriter in there. We all we hear it for weeks and weeks. It's you were gonna get me laid for a second there, and then you pulled out the typewriter. <laughs> and I was like, no, never mind. Not it just is. a typewriter, an old typewriter I click it you like that kind of stuff right the the old not getting laid apparently this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When this guy talks I'm like oh get him out of here yeah you think you'd be used by by being married now I didn't think that'd be an issue anymore <laughs> you gonna take maybe that that's me? just me <laughs> you gonna take that you gonna take I'm just that? gonna get from both sides now <laughs> yeah <laughs> were there any specific like values that you really wanted to drive home with him yeah you know what the, the one of the biggest values and I see I see that in, in your relationship but, and Lisa and I would have been like that since day one, never take your spouse or partner for granted. Never belittle what they say, right? And, and sometimes spouses will say some pretty wacky, crazy things, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, so Not when, here. He is, when he is due. <laughs> Not ever, <laughs> yeah. It was important for us to, to, to have the, not only the appearance of having a good relationship, but actually Truly. having a good yeah. relationship and your kids, your, Nia will notice your mm. behavior when you, when you two interact right. always. Right. And, and so if it's a, if it's a strong relationship, it's a good relationship. Um, that's what she's going to see. And, and in her mind, that's what relationships are going to right. be for her. Right. We live in a, in a, in a, in a loud, uh, chaotic household where there's lots of yelling and lots, not even necessarily violence, but unkind words or, uh, all these little things your kids pick up on, mm -hmm, right? And mm -hmm. it'll be reflected in their behavior as they grow up. Um, and, and for a girl, it might be, 
uh, well, that's what I'm to expect. So, you know, that's, I'm not going to look for the Mr. Perfect. They're all like that. Right. And for a guy, well, the loneliest thing to be for a man uh, is to be the only one making decisions, the only one responsible for this. It, it's, it's, it's exhausting. And really, you, that's, you end up making some pretty stupid decisions mm -hmm. because two has always better than one, right? right? right. And, and, and you're, if you have a good relationship with your spouse, you can have an open conversation. You can, you can tell the other person politely and, and respectfully, yeah, that's not going to work and this is why it's not going to work. Or, yes, we should do this and this is why we should do this. And even both of you, as we will still sometimes make mistakes, important not to point fingers. Never, ever, ever uh, dump your problems on your spouse. So I guess when I'm looking, it's more character issues, I think. Um, but I have that, issues. That, that you've identified in me. <laughs> well, no, you, you do have a lot of good, you are uh, a stand up guy. And, and, and that was the, uh, the, the, the thing that, that <laughs> made us realize we did a good job, right? You're respectful to people. You're respectful to, uh, not only adults, but people that you've just met. Um, Maybe your sense of humor can be a little cutting at times, but hey, that can be a good thing, right? Um, Got him this far. Well, yeah. And, it, and it's, <laughs> again, uh, 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 we're familiar with his type yeah. of humor. So for us, it was never uh, an insulting or it was never kind of uh, uh, always looking to make some points yeah. off of humor. Because yeah. we both have roughly the same type of humor and we take yeah. jabs at each other when we can. Not me. Yeah, well, Couldn't yours, be this are, guy. yours are not funny. Mine are. <laughs> wow. And I, that's probably the only way I can That's where say. the delusion comes from, <laughs> too, clearly. So I guess I, I, I would say the, the, the values or um, uh, integrity is, is, is good. One. But loyalty um, and being a stand-up guy, two words. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Hardest two words to say sometimes, right? Because it, it's, you're admitting that you were wrong. You're admitting that your opinion wasn't the correct one. And as doesn't matter if you're adults, but as, uh, and the older you get as an adult, the harder it becomes to do that. Um, so I think if I can impart anything, yeah, don't always think you've got the right answer or your uh, opinion supersedes my opinion or her opinion or anybody else's, right? So keep an open mind and listen to the other side's dialogue, the other side's uh, um, thoughts. Mm -hmm. So again, don't belittle, don't uh, embarrass uh, and, and respect your spouse. Mm -hmm. So you do all that in spades. So uh, you guys have a good relationship and I'm very happy about that. I think, and I think the, the, uh, the, the biggest recipient of good from that will be Nia, right? Uh, she's going to think that all relationships should be like that. So she will look for a relationship or a partner that is like her dad. Are you trying to make us cry? <clears throat> no, I'm just trying to be honest. I don't have a soul anymore, so right. you're not going to get a tear <laughs> out of me. In but... 10 or 15 minutes, you won't be crying. <laughs> You'll be pummeling me to death. <laughs> no, you should be pummeling me to death. Has, um, has anything about me surprised you? As a father, as a husband, as an, as an adult man. You know what? I, 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 I pondered that for a bit, and I think, no, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think I'm surprised by it. I'm pleased by it. But no, I, I, I wouldn't say I, I'm surprised by, by what you become and what kind of husband and father you become. I, uh, I would hope that your mom and I had some influence on that. And I'm going to go to my grave thinking that your mom and I had some influence on that. So no, I, I, um, I, don't, uh, I wouldn't use the word surprise at all. No, I, I think you've, um, you've, evolved into a, uh, you've evolved into a fine young man. Listen, all I heard was young and, and fine, bad. and I'm happy with it. <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I'll say this. And as my partner, um, you alluded to it earlier about like the fact that Nia will be the person to benefit from our relationship and the way that our dynamic is the most. And like, and I speak about this on the show often, just like seeing the way that my parents did or did not interact and how it directly impacted me. And then so Coulter was immediately very gentle with me as a partner or as a girlfriend, what have you. Mm -hmm. Um and he'd always say, and like my parents, I'd never see them fight. I know that there was an argument. I know that there was a disagreement, but they would never fight in front of me. They'd never make it uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So he very much grew up with like that gentleness in the house um, and has always been, like you mentioned before, quick to take accountability, t quick to say sorry. So I like I see that that as a direct result of your parenting is mm -hmm. from you, you and Lisa, um, seeing that like he very much 
prioritizes that in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, and all three of you will benefit from that. And it's just, uh, it really is that simple. I mean, it, it, there's so many complicated things in life. Uh, that isn't one of them. Mm. I think that's a, the, the, as they say, it's a, it's a no brainer, right? Uh, be nice. And usually people will be nice right back to you. Mm. And I, I, I think you've done well. Oh, you've both done well. Thank you. Should we get into the next part being navigating your relationship with in-laws, which is basically the theme of the episode. Yeah. And, and that's an interesting topic. Okay. And, and, uh, well, <laughs> and, and I'll give you, um, I'll give you my experience with my in-laws. Yeah. Um, and, and it'll be for sure different than our relationship. Sure. It was a different era as well, but I like my in-laws right away, we got along well with all of them. I, I think I met uh, Lisa's brothers first. Okay. Uh, and that was a kind of a good uh, um, first step, I think, because they're the ones that are going to kind of look you in the eye and say, yeah. don't be messing with my sister. Yeah. So that went really well. And the next person I met with her was her mother, and we met uh, at her place of work and had lunch with her. Uh, it was like a job interview. Well, <laughs> kind of, right? And then uh, lastly, no, but like, what, I, I, I go back to that though. Like, what did you talk about? Like, you're at you're at lunch with your you know your gal's well, let mom. Let me tell you, we're sitting now, we're having lunch, and it was uh, it was Brenda and Lisa talking. Right? <laughs> and I'd be occasionally <laughs> I would say, and you're just there. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, this is really good. Or, but it was just them having lunch, right? And, and I was along with them. Um, now, at the time they didn't know that we were cohabitating. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. So, and that was. We had to keep that a secret sim for work purposes. Oh, yeah. Uh, we yeah. weren't allowed to date. Uh, so I was my wife's superior. Mm. Um, so that was uh, verboten, right? You can't date staff, especially subordinate staff. Right. So that was something we said, well, screw that, right? <laughs> so we had to keep that a secret. Right. So we did for months, um, but eventually you can't, right? So, I mean, her mom found out first and then, uh, and then her dad. And now... I wasn't there when her dad was told and Lisa had planned a birthday party for me. Would have, would have been my, uh, 25th birthday. Whatever it was. Anyway. So Lee, uh, your mom calls me and says, Oh, my dad's going to come pick you up at our apartment that I didn't know. He still didn't know that we were living together. So I wouldn't, I wasn't sure what to expect from that. So I look for his truck and I see his truck pull out and I'm thinking, man, I got one, I got two choices now, man. Your butthole's so nice. I didn't see him. This is the first interaction? This is the first interaction I would have had with, uh, with her dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I get in and says, hi, shake his hand. And we talked about really nothing for a few, and it was only about a five minute drive. It was the weather. It was this, that. Oh, you're in like, you're in the truck with him at this point. Oh yeah. He's picking me <gasps> up. Oh, God. Um, uh, for my birthday party. Right. Just has so, a shotgun <laughs> laying well, across the again, dashboard I casually. I don't know how he's feeling. <laughs> I don't know if he's angry with me or if he's, uh, uh, okay with it or anything else. So the conversation was light. It was certainly not threatening. And then uh, that was it, man. There was no, uh, there was no. He didn't um, bring it up at all. He never brought it up. Oh wow! Not even once. Not even once. You know, difficult conversations. Why are you giggling? And she were like, "I thought you were in prayer for a moment. You were just like looking down. Like, is she talking to Jesus right now? <laughs> God, give me the strength. Yeah. You said you never give you only give your hardest uh, wars to your biggest soldiers, but I don't want to be a soldier no more, God. I want softness. Yeah, you're weak as hell. Give me a hard wig and a soft life, if that's what's necessary. And a hard man. You got one of those already. <sighs> you know, but if you're seeking softness <sighs> and you need the energy and the mental clarity to leave him, Alaska Rodeola. Probably not the best joke in this episode. We are not getting a divorce. <laughs> having some hard ass conversations but that's what this is for that mental clarity that focus that stamina to hold your ground maybe like you and my dad can be rhodiola buddies you should get my dad on rhodiola i think you should you know I i'm like i'm should. sowing the seeds he's like you know he's 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 a uh, he's a fella we get stuck in our ways mean? a lot of the time ew none of this boys will be boys nonsense because i didn't this, say this that this is why you need to leave him i didn't okay? say that at all i'm challenging that i'm saying take the alaska rhodiola take it with dominique you know, 
Maybe you have a coffee coffee date every morning. Oh, that's actually a great idea. Not every, every morning. Every morning. I don't want to have a date with anybody every morning. Like, not even you and You and my, my dad can, like, you'll have, like, uh, hit the crossword together. Crossword. You know? Sure. Yeah, have well, you ever you, seen me do a crossword in you your get life? A, you get, a, like, a breakfast place and your regulars at a breakfast place together. Oh. Yeah. Everybody knows our name? Yeah. No. <laughs> Labels on the other <laughs> side, sis. <laughs> But yes, Alaska Rodeola does give you mental clarity, mental focus, mental stamina. It does in- improve your overall energy. So yes, like it can do all of these things. Are preparing for like these deep conversations and stuff. Listen, a supplement like this will absolutely help. A supplement like this or this supplement? This supplement, period. I need to read the goddamn notes once in a while. The, the notes do not say this supplement. akroseroot.com. Play 15 at checkout. You say 15% off. We get a cut. You get some some glorious, glorious rhodiola. Cultivated. Five years it takes to make this. Ooh. That's longer than it takes to make a human. That's our stamina. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I get the, the farmers are definitely taking rhodiola. <laughs> yeah, five years of this stuff, you know? Weeding. They get so much weeding. Okay. Yeah, it's like the biggest thing. You saw the process. Yeah, you know what there. you're speaking about. I, I have there. to assume. I, I traveled it. If you're ever like, oh, these guys like... You know, I, I'm worried that maybe they're just like taking a check. Like, I, bro, I went to Alaska. I'm pretty sure this bottle is empty at this point. Where I have one drop left because I actually do take this every single morning. Yeah, there's like a couple of drops left inside of it. Um, and truly, again, as someone who can't, can't drink coffee, I have it in my morning ginger shot. You're so day. weak. Nobody wants to work anymore. Leave him. AKRoseRoot.com. Play 15 at checkout. Fix your life. I think it's a good time to transition to boundaries and like communicating those boundaries mm. because that can be like you talked about an age difference and also the power dynamics there. Like that can be difficult. Like how do you, how do you tell, how do you, you know, tell your in-laws that like, I like this, I don't like this, please don't speak to me like that. How do you resolve bites? Like, how do you even approach that conversation? Did you have to approach that conversation? No, I didn't. Uh, and, and I guess back to my comment that, that it's, um, for me, it was a different uh, circumstances and dynamic than, than, than meeting you. And, 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 um, and, and honestly, the difficulties you and I have had, uh, um, kind of forming common ground or forming, um, um, alliance isn't the word I'm looking for, but forming a, a bond, right. And, and, and that doesn't happen unless both of us have that trust. Sure. So, it's just something that, I mean, we've been at this for what, 11 years 15? now? Well, I'm, I'm, I think uh, seriously, I mean, uh, yeah. you guys have been married for almost 10. almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. So yeah. even <laughs> let's go a, a year before that or even two. So yeah, we're, we're looking at 12 years mm-hmm. now that we've been working on that. And we've had, it's almost like a, it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster mm-hmm. ride, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it's been lots of fun is what you're saying. People think <laughs> roller coasters, they think theme parks, they think, you know, yeah. a dual Except candy. the roller coaster falls off the rails, right? <laughs> and then it's no longer. Or get stuck upside down at the top. (laughs) So, I mean, I guess you can use that analogy, right? We've had a couple of stuck upside down uh, Mm. roller coaster moments. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say this, in in all the bad, for lack of a better word, there was never any vitriol. There was never any um, vindictiveness or, um, how should I put it, animosity. We, We fundamentally disagree on a lot of things. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it can become a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And I think you mm-hmm. and I have had a taste of that as well. Absolutely. Um, and I think we are making progress, and, and, and the word is progress. We are making yeah. progress. Yeah. And, and the sheer fact that I'm here sitting down Absolutely. doing a podcast about in-laws, mm-hmm. I think shows that, yeah, we are, of that. We're, we're, we're both making an effort. Uh, to find that common ground and to find the, 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 the things that bind us as opposed to work or, or as opposed to dwell on the things that we don't agree on. And like it or not, you and I will go to our graves not agreeing on everything. It's just same with you, Coulter. There, there's f- fundamental things you and I will never see eye to eye with. And we have to understand that and accept that. And I think w- we, are, we are doing some of that by avoiding the, uh, the, the, the landmines, avoiding those traps, right. That, that get us down that rabbit that hole. That we have set for each other. Yeah. You and I are a lot better now at not, um, not just not taking the bait, but also not baiting the other person. Yeah. 
and, and I'm not sure which one is worse, right? The baiting <laughs> is probably worse. And in the NFL, you'd get an instigating uh, flag. Do not make a sports analogy on this show. This is the <laughs> wrong sports audience. Sports was your wheelhouse. The <laughs> absolute wrong audience. Yeah, I, I think boundaries are almost essential. Um, tough to to do though. How do you mm. how do you bring up to somebody who um, you know loves you and wants to hang around with you and wants to be with you all the time and wants to do? Yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, back away for a little bit. And yeah. and I again I. I wish we would have done that more with with my mom and dad in the sense that uh, when they when they came for a visit it wasn't an overnight or a couple of days right it was at least 2 weeks and sometimes damn. 3 damn so I got to tell you could not be me I love you could not be well, me no, and I, and I, with either side I, I would not I would not want that Thank either, you. because it would be just as annoying for me wow. as it, to not as, be in your home yeah weekends are okay I would never impose that on, on my kids and I so yeah, that I wish we would have uh, uh, kind of set boundaries there, depending on the importance of it. I mean, if it's okay. really something that bothers you about me or Lisa or uh, anybody else with their in-laws. And keep it to your damn self. Got, <laughs> no, well, again, <laughs> how severe is it? Now ask yourself, like, is this a deal breaker? Is this something that I just can't get over and I'm not going to be able to go visit and, and be happy about it if I don't solve this problem? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I, th I think the, the the toughest thing to do is rip that bandit off and say, "Hey, mm -hmm. uncomfortable uh, conversation coming, but hey, it would make me really happy if you guys did this or didn't do this." Nobody likes to hear that, but I think most of us can take it. Most mm -hmm. of us can uh, can can see the the reasoning behind it and 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 the and the plus for it. So, um, yeah, I I would suggest do it early. Right. The longer you wait, the harder mm -hmm. it becomes, and mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. somebody, goes, well, Jesus Murphy, why didn't you say that? Two, three years ago, Because now you right? both look crazy because it looks like you've accepted that for a long time. Well, yeah. And now you're suddenly calling out. And it's like, well, you didn't give me the opportunity to acknowledge this request of yours. So you, you also didn't give me an opportunity to respect you in that case. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 And like in any relationship, sometimes you can be in a funk, right? Sometimes things just get uh, bottled up, maybe. Things get rough, for lack of a better word. Like what's your advice for people on how to repair that? And I think you you alluded to it earlier, so maybe you could expand on both I'm, people needing to trust yeah, each other. I'm mm -hmm. going to actually um, use you as an example of that. Um, and it was fairly recent, too. I'm going to say less than a month ago. Our relationship has been um, different since you're... Uh, since you've been grow older or grown up, right? So it's just, it's it's harder for us to adapt to that simply because we're just so used to being parents. We're so used to uh, being the ones that are giving you guidance and so on. So it almost, it's not insulting, but it's, you feel like almost unappreciated when nobody asks you for your opinion or your input. But back to the, back to the point, how do you repair that? You and I were having an issue, um, uh, again, about a month ago and, we talked on the phone and I cut you off a few times and then I said, I just don't have the time. And, and that was it. The conversation was over. And then later on that night, quite a bit later on that night, uh, you sent me um, a voice message and it wasn't a 20 second voice message or, uh, you know, it was, <laughs> I was about 18 or 20 minutes long or at least anyway, it was, um, culture talks. Yeah. So <laughs> I, but it, 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 it it was his first opportunity, I think, uh, maybe ever, to have an uninterrupted mm. conversation with me to, exp to express what he really felt. And it wasn't until then that I realized um, how at fault I was in that sense. I didn't do my job as a parent, didn't listen to the other side, didn't um, it didn't care, right? It was more about me at that point. Uh, so yeah, that was probably the best thing. Oh, I feel like a child. The best no, we thing cry to, on this uh, show. Don't worry. Don't worry. It was the best thing that happened to me probably, uh, in a great many years. So that will lead to a better, uh, relationship with you and me. So it's, it's things like that. They're, uh, they're painful, right? It was painful for me to hear that. It was, it, but to my, um, uh, props to me, I didn't shut it off. Mm. I listened to the whole thing quietly. Um, so I think, I think I sent you a, a note that night that, mm. uh, I had read it. And for the most part, I agree with you 100%. Can I tell you something? Um, it, it didn't send it first. 
And sometimes you have that problem with a voice note that's longer than mm. 20 seconds, which is as long as a voice note should be. <laughs> and so <laughs> when they get long like that, it's a lot of data to process. And I didn't think it went through. And I was just going to sit on it. Mm. But it did go through. Didn't, and right? I, well, no, I, I was uh, it was out of my hand at that point. Oh, I didn't think okay, that it had sent. Yeah. And so my thought at that point was, okay, well, like maybe I need to like listen to this again in the morning and decide if I actually want to send it or re-record it or something or maybe not address it at all. And I'm glad that it. I'm glad that it went through. Oh, so am I. Okay, so you <laughs> alluded to this earlier, um, that yeah, we've had a roller coaster of a relationship, um, and I had the opportunity to speak to Lisa Coulter's mom one on one about this once, and I actually hadn't remembered it, but she was telling me that like the first time we met, I came over to your house, nervous as hell. <laughs> no, um, you did great. Yeah, spilled my Red Bull everywhere. Like it was just, just a mess. <laughs> Also, um, you're meeting you're meeting your dude's parents for the first okay. time. Very stressful. It it's uncomfortable. Yeah, you're like, I need a I need a Red Bull. That was that was you're my already shaky drink enough. At the time. Should have been red wine. Yeah, bottle or like a Xanax or something. Wasn't yeah. a red wine lover yet. Wasn't uh, a red wine lover yet. It wasn't until we became a blue well Yeah, too, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Two or three of those, and you're good to go. There you go. So she explained. She was retelling. She's like, you came over, and then you were telling us about our white privilege. And I didn't remember it, but it very much sounded like 18-year-old Dom. Um, also 33-year-old Dom. <laughs> well, maybe not like upon meeting someone, um, but just started going into like white privilege. And I don't, I, don't, I don't even know if she remembers. Maybe you remember like the context of that conversation, why I brought it up, what I would have even said. No, and I, 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 I would assume, though, that it, it, it would have been you walking into our house uh, and, wow, you must be nice, right? Mm. And... I don't know if your immediate thought of us, uh, oh, these guys are wealthy, and which we were not, and we're still not. Um, but it does, I, I, I can understand that, oh, geez, they, their privilege got them to where they are, right? I, and I'm okay. sure that that's what you thought. It's the only thing I can think of in that context, what it was. I don't okay. remember the actual conversation. Right. I mean, that was a few years ago. It was ago. years. It was a few years, years. I would like to think and hope that it would have been a little bit more nuanced and like talking about Coulter and I being in university at the same at that time and like yeah. hopefully but again neither neither one of us remember the conversation so no so I guess there wasn't anything overly um negative or positive about it sure. I mean it was just sure. I guess a conversation right yeah yeah so all that to say like yeah I'm I was very much or maybe still am very much a coming in hot type of person do I don't I've never and have and hopefully never will shy away from controversial com conversations no, maybe you start with you. the weather though first you go hey pleasant day <laughs> nice effing day out right yeah like you know and maybe maybe start there right and then you, you walk into then controversy talk about malcolm x sure yes. Yes. sure yes. approaches yeah. see absolutely start soft and end hard right <laughs> wait a minute that doesn't so, sound right <laughs> what have what have you learned you know we asked my Ooh. dad what he's learned i'm curious like when it comes to boundaries and it comes mm -hmm. to communications on the other side of, well, not even on the other side of it, you were speaking dad about your experience setting boundaries with in-laws. I'm curious, Dominic, mm -hmm. your experience with setting boundaries with mm -hmm. in-laws and communicating. Pierre, what you said earlier about like giving, like communicating earlier, yeah. that that's probably my largest lesson. Um, boundaries and conversations around like unspoken and spoken boundaries have been a huge theme in our family for the more recently. Mm -hmm. Um, now, when you say family, do you mean like you, me, and Nia? Do you I mean, mean extended Bouchard's. family? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I would have given you all the opportunity to, I guess, like, show, I assumed that I wouldn't be shown the respect that I wanted in the way that I wanted mm -hmm. and therefore made myself inaccessible based on that assumption. And what I should have done was communicated that, communicated that earlier, um, communicated my feelings um, respectfully, and then it's your choice. Well, then to the ball's in my to. court, exactly, right? and, and, exactly. And, and, and then it becomes my choice to uh, agree with you and, and, I, and, and sit down and listen, or uh, fluff you off, right? Exactly. So, exactly. But it would have been my choice, and you would have done. Uh, all that you can do right. at that stage. So, hey, lessons learned on both sides, right? I, 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 biggest part for me, and I don't think you're too far. We have the same birthday, by the way. Just so <gasps> we do. this may explain a few things. Aries, it all makes sense now, doesn't yeah, it? We are both of us extremely stubborn. Would you say? I would say. <laughs> 
sometimes you need a little pain in order to end the bigger pain. Right, right. So I, I um, and I think you, your relationship and my relationship, I think, needs something like that. And I think, uh, and and it's going to, I, I, again, today is not the day, but we could do another podcast completely solely on that. Mm. Um, is how how do you reconcile our points of view? And I think I've described it with Coulter. Him and I, again, differ on, on, on a lot of things, but we agree on more than we do. That is true. And again, most of the, the thing, we agree on the end result. Okay. We are worlds apart on the, on the, on the path to get there. Sure. So again, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I mean, we have, again, commonality in, in the end results or in the end goals. Uh, and I don't think we're, you and I are any different. There has to be a, a, a way, a more of a way forward. And that requires effort on both parties, on both sides, right? It's not a, it's not a linear thing or it's not a, um, and I'm going to use one of your words here. It's, Ooh, <laughs> it's I'm excited not, for this. <laughs> it's not a, um, um, oh God, I forgot. Well, you have notes. The guy's got I'm notes. So <laughs> I, I, I just what I wanted to use it, but now I got to He's got like annotations not, in there. It's not, it's not binary, Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not a, a binary thing. So, whoa! Um, what a woke king over here <laughs> talking about oh, non-binary. I got to talk. There's there's a lot of words that I had never heard before. Whether it's intersectionality, uh, binary, non-binary. Um, there was another. Oh, my favorite, and you'll know that one. Microaggressions was <laughs> was was a thing that. What the heck is that? And so we go big in this house, our, that, and that was all part of our our. Um, <laughs> are maybe not so much miscommunication, but not sure. communicating, sure. right? Yeah. So um, I'm feeling like, wow, you're trying to lecture me. Right, right, right. And you're thinking, why won't this man understand? Like right, there's right, more right. than just, so again, <laughs> right? It's, uh, we we got off, I think, on the wrong foot, right? I think almost, Initially. Right, like almost yes. all of gate. And we can never really get that train back on the tracks. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. if you, hold on, what oh, if you Lord. recreated it? Everything. I walked you dress into the, the house. same Red Bull. <laughs> You have to like you sold the house years ago. But that means you we got to we got to go through it the last twelve years. No, yeah. no, no, just that initial oh, just that meeting. Day. Oh. Yeah, no, we we don't have time for that. <laughs> we, we have an we afternoon. Can do a hard reset. Yeah, a hard boot. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, um, if if that were possible, I'd say great. Right. But it's not possible. So the next best thing is, I don't think we have to start a new mm -hmm. per se, but we have to start with a new. Mindset. I think we have to start uh, maybe um, on a different page than we started before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and like I've said, uh, oftentimes, right, we need to focus more on the things that we have in common. Right. Whether it's uh, opinions, birthday. whether it's goals, whether it's uh, likes and dislikes. But we have to work on that first. I think if, if we if we don't if we can't solve our core problems, you and I will never have a good relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. and to me, that becomes almost impossible to have um, uh, uh, what I would call a normal relationship with my granddaughter and her parents, mm. right? And it goes beyond just our immediate family. It goes to, towards my daughter and her husband and their child, or their children now. So there, there's a great big picture that needs to be addressed, but you and I have to work on on, on the first frame, right? Um, uh, chapter one, mm -hmm. paragraph one, line one. Right. What if you went for lunch or like bowling or something? No, I, I th no. well, I th no, I, I think it's, uh, it, and you know what, this is, um, Coulter and I had um, kind of brushed upon this, uh, again, not that long ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And it was about a, um, a mediation. Now, I thought it was a mediation, uh, between the three of us, but okay. it wasn't. But it made me think, yeah, that's probably something uh, that is almost needed, right? A, an arbitrator, uh, somebody who can um, necessarily, okay, you know what, settle down, or mm. no, you're right, but uh, so on and so forth. Right. So ironically, what we're doing here ends up being exactly that, right? Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. we get to, um, I get to at least, un unburden myself of some things that I've done wrong, some uh, things that I, I, I probably should have addressed earlier and didn't. Um, and again, all those things you and I cannot change. We can't alter right. the past, but we sure can form a different future, right? Mm. So I think that's, uh, today, I guess, would be the first step in that, right? I'm here, I'm doing this. And I appreciate I that. Thank you. Did this voluntarily, yeah. and and with the with the um, with the mindset that this is our step one, right? 
Mm. And for you and for Coulter and I, it's it's working on our step two, three, four, right? It, it's it's almost like we're rediscovering ourselves all over again. Too much time gets spent in in first impressions, and we don't do enough to try to erase that first impressions with a second with impression or impressions. a third impression, sure. right? I think we're we're hardwired that way to make quick judgments on one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can tell this is going to be hard. This is going to be horrible. This is going to, you know, they're they're just not on the same page, or we're never going to get. And that's all from I don't. Know, a couple hours uh, right. meeting, right? And that's unfair. Mm-hmm. That was unfair for, for me uh, as, uh, to do that to you and, and to be a recipient of that as well. Again, none of these we can change, right? Can't guarantee you the outcome will be better than where we are today. Sure. But it certainly won't be worse. for lack of effort. Yeah. Oh, and it certainly well, won't be worse. be worse. I don't think I it don't could know be it can worse. be. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the same page so, about that. Uh, yeah, and again, we have more things in common than we don't. Sure. So I I, again, I I, I'm going to move forward with that in mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I want you guys to be part of our lives as much as Nia is part of our lives. Um, I guess that means we're sleeping over uh, once a week. <laughs> <laughs> For in the, the week. Same room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're going yeah. to fix it, Dom. I mean, uh, because we have no choice. Mm. In my mind, we have no choice. And again, if it's, for no other reason than Nia's benefits. Yep. Right? I agree. Um, and, and you need to trust us that we're never going to do or say anything to her that would negatively impact her, either her relationship with you and, and Coulter uh, or her uh, uh, self-confidence, self-esteem. Our job as grandparents is... To load them up with as much sugar as possible no, before sending them back, them back we, home. We do that. <laughs> Out of, just because we, we like because to do that. Because you're masochists. Yeah, because no, yeah, we, we are masochists. Say this. Yeah, yeah. say this. Yeah, because you're going home with all this sugar in you. Uh, but our job as grandparents is, is to to nurture her, to 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 feed on her self conscious, make her mm-hmm. uh, make her believe she's good, make her believe yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Um, smart, and, and so on. So as grandparents, it's positive reinforcement is what she's going to get from us, right? I don't know when your one of your questions was how will I react to to uh, racial questions that may arise with Nia, mm-hmm. and uh, this one gives me a bit of pause because I'm not sure how to address that. Mm-hmm. Getting back to our job as a as a G paw, my job is uh, to protect Nia, mm-hmm. both physically and psychologically. Mm-hmm. Right? I when she's in our care. I have to make sure that she's, no one's going to hurt her, harm her, and that includes me. Uh, no one's going to uh, uh, um, hurt her psychologically uh, because that's also my job. Right. So there will inevitably be questions relating to race as she grows up. And I'm going to handle those. I will never uh, not discuss it with her. But I'm hoping by then you and I are more on the same page because uh, it would break my heart and probably reset our, our, our relationship back to before square one. If all of a sudden Nia comes home and uh, we're, you know, oh, would you guys, oh, g was saying that blah, 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 mm-hmm. which is not what you want her to, to think. So in my mind, I may be thinking, no, I'm telling her the truth or I'm telling her something that I believe is okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it turns out, well, no, you've been telling her the opposite mm-hmm, or something that's mm-hmm. not quite the same. So now your, your, whatever trust we may have built up right. is gone. Yeah. So personally, again, I, I will answer her questions when she has them. Um, and I'm confident by then we will be, you and I will be in a better place. Uh, and it, I won't feel as, um, I won't feel as um, nervous or as um, scared, okay. right? To say okay. the wrong thing. Right, right. But you need to know. And I, 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 I know for a fact that you believe I have a good heart. No, absolutely. So. So I, I'm also comfortable knowing that you don't think I would cause her any harm. harm. No, absolutely Again, not. psychological harm is, is yeah. just as bad as physical absolutely. harm. Absolutely. So she will always be safe and secure and feel safe and secure in, in our care. Um, but yeah, those questions will come up and, and I have to be ready for them. But I want us to be in a, in a better place before that happens, hopefully, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, before that happens. And trusting each other and also being comfortable having those discussions with each other and knowing that, like, for instance, if my dad asks you a question, mm-hmm. um, you know, comes to you, 
because he's a white man and he's asking you a question because you're a black woman and wants yeah. your insight on yeah. that. That it's trusting that it's not tokenism and trusting that, uh, Very you know, good point. he's got good intention. Like that, listen, that, that takes a lot. It took you it and does. I a couple of years to get there in our relationship, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so listen, I think that this is like, there's this belief that I see you as the enemy and oh, because we have um, opposite political beliefs, for example, that I see you as like the enemy that needs to be destroyed. And I truly believe that of like, <laughs> Should I leave? I was like, <laughs> will I be able to leave like, in a few wow. minutes? Oh, doors locked from the outside. <laughs> I'm like, they won't even hear me screaming. <laughs> I we've had many debates over the years, and I think that we've had very like constructive and respectful debates over the years. Um, so it's not that I don't want you to to have these sorts of discussions, or that, um. I don't want Nia to be able to have these sorts of discussions with you either. I think it's largely a matter of because that trust isn't there, yeah. it it often turns into beyond a debate, just straight up arguments yeah. and not being able to see I what you're saying, agree with having the end goal be the same. Yeah. Um, so even with Coulter and I, like, I didn't want to be like the the magical Negro having to teach him all about race relations and like, here's the black experience because like, that's not how life but works. Googling is hard and expensive. <laughs> so I don't want to be, it's my husband. So obviously, yes, I do have to take on that additional labor of like, here's maybe like, if you said that to that person, this is probably how they receive that because of these things. Mm -hmm. And as my partner, yeah, I absolutely take on that labor and we're going to work through that every single time. Just like Nia, she's white as much as she is black. So we're going to have to have those conversations mm -hmm. too. I think the difference with you and I, you and Lisa, you and your daughter, we haven't been able to get there yet because no. we don't have that base level. We don't. Trust. No, we don't. Or like, And I'm not, I, I, I will go a step further. I don't even think we ever came close to having that trust. Mm. Um, and again, not not through dislike or hatred sure. or, or it, we, we have been incapable of formulating a sensible plan mm. to get us to where we want to yes. go, right? It's yes. been kind of almost, um, um, how would I call that, disjointed, right? Disjointed efforts, and we'll try a little bit of this, yep. and then we try yep. a little bit of that, but never Nothing long sustained. enough or hard enough. Exactly. It's never sustained long right. enough. And there's, there's a, probably a, a number of reasons for that, right? Um, whether it wasn't communicated properly or whether it wasn't received properly. And again, back to the, what I've said a couple of times, eh? that is my, my has been, um, and I guess still is until I've corrected it properly, my problem. I don't take enough time to listen. I, I'm too quick to, to do the fact check, the, the, mm. the immediate fact check, right? Or no, no, that's not true. I didn't say that. Let the person speak, right? And that there's plenty of time for discourse back and forth. But again, um, one mouth, two ears, you should be listening twice as much as you're talking. So that's been my problem for, well, forever. Also, I'd have to do a lot of listening if that was the case, because <laughs> I'm not going to talk any less. It's not easy to 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 show one's vulnerabilities, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, especially when you don't have that level of trust. Yes. And yes. then you you think, wow, I'm, I'm giving that person way more ammunition than mm. I should be because it could come back could and come haunt back. me, right? So yeah, I, I, I think... Um, uh, Let's take it one day at a time, right? But let's do something let's take every it. day. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's yeah. take this and and do something with it. Pretty cool guy, eh, my dad? <laughs> As if I just met him. <laughs> I do want to say uh, an immense amount of growth mm. from myself, from him, from you. And I think that that was a really, um, a really like 2024 way of talking about our feelings. <laughs> no, like in all, in all seriousness, I mean, uh, I'm really proud of the way that my dad and I were able to like is chew. Is chew. Is chew. Wow. Uh, that sounded like I had a lot of letters in there. Not like toxic masculinity. I don't necessarily think my dad's like up at night thinking about like how can I be a less toxic male because I don't think he's toxic I don't think and I don't. I don't think men in general think like that. So I um. I, I don't know what I'm doing to, here. Yeah. <laughs> to, to save that, but yeah, no. I first of all, it's absolutely a very 2024 way of handling a very intimate conversation, very publicly. Um, on a podcast of all things. Um, but like it felt good. First of all, he did not have to come on. No. And when we invited him on, he immediately said, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll be there. We invited him on like a Friday and he showed up. He's on. asked to be on a few times. Okay. So like he was he was ready. And I even, I was telling him 
before we were recording, like I, I sent you the questions and I was wondering, like, are you, you going to have an issue? And he's like, I was thinking, what, what, what kind of excuse could I use to get out of this? Um, but he took he the conversation. Notes. He, he showed up with no, he had receipts. Beautiful he handwriting. He was quoting on my father, me. By the way. Oh, I've never yeah. noticed. Um, so yeah, that does take that takes a lot that of takes balls, um, bro. That takes balls. It takes ovaries too. He doesn't have balls. Uh, so you know, we cannot be perfect, but. Shout out to him. I honestly do. I, I appreciate him coming on. I appreciate him being so vulnerable and so honest and having that conversation with us. I hope that um, I hope that certainly like fathers and sons that maybe like don't talk a whole lot will be. And I know our audience is like 900 percent women. but Maybe like send this to your man if he's having a hard time or if like send this to the fellows in your life. You should be doing that anyway. Spread the word. But I hope that uh, this will help. Let's help guys have intimate, emotional conversations with each other. It's difficult. A lot of guys find difficulty in that. I mean, a, a lot of people do. Yeah. Period. Um, I'm I'm sure it's 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 difficult for men specifically. Thank you. I think um for no not it's, to like minimize it's, it's your, our time. Yeah, not to minimize your experience at all. But in addition to that, just like people navigating the relationships with their in laws yep. or just difficult relationships with their families, um, I think like ours is a little bit particular in that everybody's kind of comfortable with the mic in front of their face. Um, but not everybody is right. So like, hopefully you're able, able to take something from this conversation that can translate into your life at your dining room table on the phone. Just love to hear your comments in the comment section, obviously. But in the meantime, follow this man at Culture Talks across the Internet. Follow my dad. He like he's, he's, have he's got he's got a Twitter account that he opened like 15 years ago. He tweeted once. Yeah, he told once. He's not on there. He's no. <laughs> My him he's not even my parents don't even have a joint Facebook account. It's just my mom. They have a joint email. Though. Email. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Follow this woman over here at Dom.creates on Instagram at Dom Creates everywhere else. And we will see you next Monday, same time, same place. But while you're waiting, you can check out some of our merch at playinghousepod.com slash shop. If you haven't already, check out our Patreon. There's a free level that you can get all the content on but you're not broke but you're not broke so become a house guest join our throuple join the neighborhood we don't know check out the tra- patreon to understand what the hell i'm talking about and we will see you again next week i love my dad a lot that meant a lot to me that he came on today shout out to pierre like legitimately yeah I'm it was really special legit. okay good i'm really happy with the relationship i have with my dad rub it in <laughs> <laughs> when's your dad coming on I love you lots. Bye.